Barnaby Dixon here. So this is going to be similar to the last video because me and my team are still working on the puppets for the stage adaptation of The Book of Dust coming this December in the British Theatre in London. As I mentioned in the last video, lockdown gave my colleague Saskia a lot of time to figure out many of the paper elements, specifically the faces of the puppets, and it gave me a chance to refine a lot of the mechanisms. Some of these mechanisms could actually be scaled up and used on the larger puppets, like this neck mechanism here. Here's the smaller version, here's the larger version. Pretty much the same concept, just a different scale. So this very orange building you're looking at here is the inside of the Innovation Suite at the Arts University Bournemouth. And this university was gracious enough to host us for three months during part of the production. Uh, even with these resources, it's a very challenging project. We wanted to set the bar very high. You know, we wanted these puppets to look like nothing that anyone had ever seen before. And the team is incredibly dedicated and the hours that they're putting on really reflect that. I still had some mechanisms to figure out, like this wing opening and flapping mechanism that is used in this early version of this bird puppet. It's, it's developed a little bit since this point, we'll show you that one soon. And also a means of having the actor's fingers fit to the puppet mechanism. Uh, so the solution that we came up with for this is kind of like a ring piece that goes around the top part of the finger and then a tip piece, both printed in PLA at a certain thickness so that you could heat it up and mold it to the specific actor's hand size, kind of like a gum shield actually. So my thinking was that we could probably cast the actor's hands in silicon, that way we wouldn't need them to, to fit the puppets and to adjust them, and also we wouldn't burn them in the process of making it. So we did a little test with my colleague here, Elizabeth, who helped me with this process with the aim of casting my hands in silicon eventually. We've got the same colour on. Oh yeah. Huh. Huh. Before the silicon could set, however, Saskia and I had to go up to London to present the Vixen puppet that you saw in the last video, and a couple of other puppets that are sprung to a neutral position and have a rod connecting to the head, so it's a very simple mechanism, but it works incredibly well. Look at how dynamic this Marmoset puppet is, and it's just from a single point of control. Yeah. That's so good. I love the movement on this one. Thankfully the puppets went down really, really well, and it was also useful to talk with the other departments, particularly lighting, about how we might illuminate these puppets from the inside. It was also really useful to talk to the costume department because they raised a point that represents a huge oversight on my part. They talked about understudies, who is someone that fills the role of an actor when the actor isn't able to make the performance for whatever reason. Now, if we're tailor-making the puppets to a specific actor, then the likelihood that this will also fit the understudy is very, very small. So instead of having a tight-fitting finger piece, I started to consider a loose-fitting part that could accommodate extra-large hands. These pieces would have hinges that ran parallel to the actor's knuckles, so that we wouldn't have to use their own knuckle as a hinge anymore, and it would have a spring that would return it to a straight position. These two elements would stop the finger piece from rattling around very much, even when it was on a finger size that was much smaller than the piece itself. So we tried it out and thankfully it worked perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> So the footage that you're viewing now are the actors trying on these puppets. And bear in mind, these folks are trying these puppets on for the first time, and the results are really good. The finger pieces, or at least the changes that we made to them, meant that anyone can use anyone else's puppets. So for rehearsal purposes and for the purposes of using understudies, this was a really good solution. Those silicon hands, by the way, didn't come out quite right. There was kind of dips and recesses in the fingers, so they weren't really useful for the purposes that we, uh, that we intended them for. But they were really fun to throw around my kitchen in slow motion. So here's a little bit of footage of that happening. Okay, that's pretty much it for this video. If you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, do subscribe and hit notifications. And if you'd like to support the work that I do, here's a link to my Patreon. Normally around this time of year, I'll do a Halloween video, but I haven't had the time to actually do it this year. Anyway, I'll catch you guys soon. Thank you for watching and take care.